Duke fucking Nukem Forever! Finally, the review that I've been waiting since my childhood to do. Well, except for YouTube wasn't actually around when I was a very little kid. But here's the thing, I've always wanted to get my hands on Duke Nukem Forever because it's literally been forever. You know, the running joke that just did not get old. Yeah, well, it just so happens Duke Nukem Forever is actually out. I've got a copy of the game. I played through the game twice now, actually, and played online, and it was fucking awesome. It was really awesome. Now, you might be thinking, oh, well, obviously he's a fan. Of course he's going to be saying the game's so amazing. My god, I could never, ever say anything bad about it. Of course I can fucking say things bad about it. Hell, not every Duke Nukem game is actually fucking pristine gold just shining and glistening in the fucking sun. Hell no, but here's the thing. Duke, Duke Nukem Forever... You know, it had so many fucking random problems just like going through the development cycle. Hell, this game is a fucking testament just to the fans that this game deserved to come out. And here's the reason why, okay? There's what, like four, five, sixty different versions of Duke Nukem Forever since it was actually started way back in the 90s? Okay, and it finally came out. And the version that we got, this one started back in 2007. So yeah, we're playing like one of the many Duke Nukem Forevers. So this one was started by 3D Realms. 3D Realms, you know, they basically kicked the fucking bucket because, I mean, what else were they really doing other than jamming their thumbs up their own asses, along with other various devices and objects that they could find that just so happened to be able to fucking grease up and lodge in there somehow. But the thing is, who came along and fixed everything? Gearbox! The guys behind Borderlands, which is another first-person shooter I fucking love because it's awesome. So those guys were kind enough to be able to come along and basically pick up the remains of Duke Nukem Forever and run with it. Why? Because not only did they want the fans to be able to experience a game that essentially was like 75-80% done, and there's tons of fans that really want to be able to play the game, yours truly included, and many of you out there, but also it's a fact that a lot of the guys on that development team, you know, they actually worked on Duke Nukem back in the day. They were friends with people in 3D realms, and they actually had personal stake in this. So yeah, it was kind of nice to be able to see them really get into it because it was a product that they wanted to be behind, not just, you know, well, we can make cash off this. No, they were actually personally invested into it. So that, yeah, I definitely applaud them for that. Now, Duke Nukem Forever, just like the past Duke Nukem games, pretty much starts off with Duke Nukem and the world is getting invaded by aliens. Well, the aliens want to come down and take all the babes, and Duke Nukem isn't going to have any of that. He's going to kick the living fuck out of every single one of them, put bolt holes into every single one under his skull. Now, out of the bunch, I'd say the Railgun and the Enforcer Gun are actually my personal favorites. Even though the Railgun, I have a little bit of a problem using the scope on it, just because the game is so fast-paced, it's kind of hard to actually use the scope. But all I do is just fire from the hip, and that's pretty much it. Just blow them the fuck away, because that's fun. Uh, the Enforcer Gun, only downside to that is you can't really shoot off like tons of them just everywhere because unfortunately you can't carry a whole crap load of them, but when you actually do have them and you're in a tight spot, yeah, it's fun as fuck to just go and well, kill everything. Only other downside to Duke's arsenal is the fact that whenever you compare it to things like, you know, Duke Nukem Landed Babes and uh, Duke Nukem Time to Kill and things like that, he actually had more weapons in those, like in addition to Duke Nukem 3D. So I would like to see what, well, I would have liked to see them basically take some of those weapons and bring them over into this, because it had been kind of cool to see some of those weapons transitioned into Duke Nukem Forever, but unfortunately, that did not happen. Also, where the fuck is Duke's boot? The mighty boot. Any time that I was playing Duke Nukem, I just ran around kicking the entire time, just boot, 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 boot. I mean, he could boot going up ladders. That's fucking awesome. So holding a weapon, going up and booting things, and just kicking ass, holding a gun, and going up ladders, so essentially he's hopping up it. I don't know how. It's Duke Nukem. He doesn't really need a fucking logical explanation. Then, you know, you could actually get the super boot, and then you're kind of like, I don't know, Luke Hank just flying through the air, beating the living shit out of everything with your mighty boots. But, yeah, unfortunately, they didn't really have that, except for, in, like, the executions. You know, you can do that every so often, but most of the time, whenever I was playing, I ended up, like, just fucking knocking them out or, like, knocking their head clean off their fucking shoulders. But what the hell? Why'd they take it out? That's one of Duke's, like, you know, most memorable things that he could do. And, I mean, how are you going to kick ass and chew bubblegum if you can't actually kick ass? You don't want to go around punching ass. It'll smell all funny. Like, who the fuck wants that? What, a little brown fist? Like, that? Yeah, it smells like alien taint.
In Duke Nukem Forever, instead of having a health bar, Duke Nukem has his ego, which makes tons of sense because Duke Nukem has a big ego, and he should. He saved the entire world from aliens how many fucking times? And in Land of Babes, he re-impregnated every single chick, well, the hot ones at least. You didn't see any fatties in that line. But he impregnated all the hottest bitches to be able to repopulate the planet. Why? Because that's what fucking Duke Nukem does best. Fucks bitches and shoots aliens. Well, yeah, he has a big reason to have ego, and that's his health bar, essentially. And it's regenerating, too, which a lot of people notice that's a nod towards more modern first-person shooters. Instead of running around finding med kits and med packs and everything like that to be able to replenish your health. Now, you know, you can say that, well, that's... That's not like the old games. I want to be like those. Well, you know, fuck it. It doesn't really matter. Just duck behind cover and let your health bar come back. You know, that's not such a big deal. Also, throughout the game, you're able to go and upgrade your ego by playing various games and little side quests and everything, increasing it. So that's something that you'll always want to do is invest time just messing around with all the little trinkets that are strewn throughout the entire world of Duke Nukem Forever because you don't want to run around with a really small, small health bar because, I mean, how many times are you going to run into a gunfight and they're just like, bang, bang, bang. Oh, you're dead. Why? Because you did not make your ego big enough. So yeah, that's something that is a very, very essential part of playing the game. It's making your health bar a lot bigger because shit can get out of hand pretty fast. Duke Nukem purists may say that they don't like it, and new gen gamers may say, you know, oh, that, it's just trying to be like the new games. Well, the thing is, Duke Nukem Forever is a combination of the old school and the new school, just meshed together into, well, what we have as Duke Nukem Forever. So I think that it works really well. The fact that they actually called it Ego instead of just a health bar was something I thought was a little clever just with Duke's personality, so I think that it actually worked. One of the more inventive areas within Duke Nukem Forever just so happens to be within Duke Burger. Now, Duke Burger actually expands beyond that, and essentially, you're Duke Nukem, but you're really tiny. So, anybody that's familiar with the shrink rate, Duke Nukem shrink things down really small. Well, they take this one step further because they allow you to navigate through an entire world, and throughout, like, all behind the scenes, through like an actual machine and everything. And it's a lot of platforming and there's other enemies that are really small that you'll have to shoot at as well. And it can be really kick-ass just seeing stuff. Cause I mean, you see the world, you know, you're running around, it's Duke Burger, you know, you're everybody's seen what a McDonald's or a Burger King or a Wendy's has looked like. But the thing is seeing it from like a rat's point of view, happens to be pretty different because you're running along canisters and everything and you have to go and jump over things such as like ovens and you have to go and run across sinks and everything like that. And it actually brought me back to thinking about a game called Chippendale Rescue Rangers on NES. Now that's a game that nobody would ever think of referencing when talking about Duke Nukem, but that's the first thing that came to mind because it reminded me of some of the early stages within that game where you're really small and you're jumping on faucets and everything. And I was just like, wow, this is just like that. And it was kind of a cool feeling because to me it felt like a, a nod to that game, which whether it was intentional or not didn't really matter because that's exactly what I started thinking of. And it's really fun. Like the level design and everything is pretty decent. And all in all, most platforming games don't even have control good enough to be able to say, well, this is worth playing. It's actually fun. But Duke Nukem Forever is a first person shooter. You wouldn't think that the platforming physics in it would be up to snuff to be able to play something like that, but it turns out, yeah, actually it really is. I navigated through every single one of those levels effortlessly. If there was ever a time that I actually died, I knew it was because I fucked up. It wasn't something I was like, oh my god, this fucking game is so retarded, why don't they fix this, blah blah blah. No, that didn't really happen. I actually went through most of the areas, and not to say that it was easy, because later on, whenever you're inside the machine, you know, there's lots of gears turning and grinding, and if you get stuck in one of them, you're pretty much going to get turned into Duke Paste, and you're just going to be all over the place and restarting from the last checkpoint. But the thing is, the way that they have it set up, you actually have to stop and look around and navigate the area, you know, and make sure that you do everything right. And on top of that, you have enemies coming after you. So it actually offers a lot of difficulty, and at the same point, it's really rewarding because it's kind of fun. Well, I can't say kind of fun. It's actually really fun. It was by far one of my favorite parts of the game, which granted, all the firefights, I mean, they're a blast. No pun intended there. Pipe bomb blast. Haha. <laughs> anyway, but the thing is, is, seeing this, it was something that I didn't actually expect, and that was one of the things that I liked was that they changed up the pace of the game often enough to make sure that, you know, just running and gunning and shooting everything and then driving and whatnot didn't actually get stale because they threw things like this, and, you know, you don't see that coming, and it's pretty nice. I definitely like it. Duke Nukem's Titty City. Yep. 
Duke Nukem ends up going off into his own fantasy world where basically he has a strip club which isn't too far-fetched and it's got one of the best names ever because you know that's what every single parent wants to see whenever they walk into a room is their child plumped down in front of a television just looking up and admiring a stripper bouncing her tits right in the screen Duke Nukem's Titty City and neon lights in the background because that is fucking awesome and I mean hey kids gotta learn about it sometime right right Anyway, so Duke Nukem City City happens to be like the absolute haven for mini games. Now, some of the games included within Duke Nukem City City happen to be pool, which pulls a health a lot better whenever you're playing in Duke Nukem City City because there's strippers everywhere. So while you're knocking a ball into a corner pocket, you can go and admire the jubblies, womp womp womp, that are passing by. That's always very nice. There's actually balls of steel. Balls, 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 balls of steel. Pinball. Yep. It happens to be one of the more clever things. I just kind of wish that while you were playing the ventrilo harassment video of Duke Nukem uh, would just randomly play. That would make me happier than hell, but it doesn't. It just has random clips of Duke Nukem talking, which works all the same because it's still just as amusing. There's actually a video poker to play as well, which it's video poker, it's poker on a video machine. And there is basketball, all of which playing all these, if you do good enough, then not only will you get a, cho a trophy and an achievement, but you can also get more ego. And we all know how important our ego is whenever you're Duke Nukem. Now the thing is, Duke Nukem Forever doesn't just have little mini games that essentially are just like, I don't know, mini games, that's really about it. You know, playing pool is just, you know, only so fun after you're done boosting your ego, do you really want to go back and keep playing it? No, you want to interact with other random things in the world of Duke Nukem Forever, and there's plenty of that. For instance, Duke can actually reach into a toilet that some asshole, of course, in a public bathroom decided that he was going to drop a deuce and not actually flush it, but Duke is the manliest man ever. He doesn't give a fuck, he just reaches right in, picks up, and you can hurl it at enemies, you can hurl it at walls, and the fact is that, like a monkey, you're just having fun hurling shit anywhere. And the fact is, that's just pretty fucking funny. You can put various things inside a microwave. Now, the thing is, if you're putting something in a microwave, what should it be? Well, you could put popcorn in a microwave. Popcorn makes sense, because it's microwavable popcorn. But if you see a rat walking around anywhere, just scurrying about on the floor, pick them up, toss them in there. Why? Because it's funny, because the rat's just like, shit, this isn't cool, I... And then you have rat stew everywhere on the inside of it. It's like Master Splinter, except for with fireworks shoved up his ass. In Duke Nukem's Titty City, there's a glory hole. Walk up to the glory hole, stuff your cock in it, and you get a blowjob. Why? Because that's what Duke Nukem does. Stuffs his dick in things. And shoots aliens. Then he stuffs his dick in things. Then pisses on stuff. Yep, that's Duke Nukem. And we love him. Like in Duke Nukem 3D, the strippers and Duke Nukem's Titty City, of course you can tip them. Why? Because that's what you do. Shake it, baby. Shake it, baby. You wanna dance? Yep. It's very fucking awesome. Anytime that you hear a John St. John do anything in Duke Nukem, it honestly just brings a big fucking smile to your face, especially if you're a longtime fan, because, I mean, John St. John, he's the only person that should do Duke Nukem. Me, I think I do a pretty good impression, but I could... Me and any other fucking person should never be allowed to fill that voice actor's boots because, quite frankly, he is the voice of Duke Nukem, and always will be. The driving sections in the game aren't too bad. It actually made me think a lot about Borderlands, which I love Borderlands to death, and the driving in this happens to be a lot better than in most first-person shooters that offer driving because whenever most first-person shooters decide to throw a driving segment after you, like, you know, you're in a shooting section, and they're like, okay, time to drive. Well, they'll have the first-person controls in it, and the car will just always control awkward. Even though I kind of like the aspect of changing up the gameplay into something like that, they never implement it in such a way that I'm just like, well, this really works. In Duke Nukem, they actually made the control physics just like any racing game. So you can pick it up and just drive just like normal, and it works really well. Whether you're in the monster truck or you're in the RC car or anything like that, it works out really well, and I'm kind of glad that they put it into the game. You know, whenever you're driving a monster truck, you'll be hitting jumps, flying through the air, crashing through everything, hopping out, start gunning down enemies, jumping a car, you know, start doing fucking donuts and running over every enemy that's stupid enough to even clamor your way. And when they do, yep, all over the place. And you're pretty much going to have pick-hop all over the fucking tires, and it'll be like, good year. Oh, that's a pick-hop brain right there. Gotta love that. One thing that I noticed that I just couldn't stop staring at, like every time I was playing, I was just like, 
what the fuck? Like, every time that there's somebody talking within the game, they they look like fucking robots. Like, it, it's like Invasion of Body Snatchers, and they just, they're all monotone looking like, and their mouth movements and facial movements are all fucked up. Like, it, it's seriously like animatronics, and it's going haywire, and it's all fucked up. It's like, like, it doesn't ever get that bad. But if you see, like, half the facial expressions, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking whenever they had them there, like, and especially in a first-person game, because they're, like, this far from your fucking face. So you're obviously going to be able to see, like, every single little detail, and it's not like it's every single part that's distracting-looking, but they could have definitely have put, like, I don't know, a couple extra days into just, like, the movements and everything. Like this. <laughs> Anything. I don't know. It's just really weird-looking, and I thought it looked retarded, like... It, it was honestly funny, if anything, considering that there's a lot of funny moments in the game. This added to it, even though it wasn't meant to. So yeah, hopefully uh, that's something I decide to fix whenever they make the next Duke Nukem. Seeing the enemies in the game this time around is damn near like a fucking 180 compared to seeing them in Duke Nukem 3D. Because in Duke Nukem 3D, they were all like cartoonish and fucking pixelated and everything. So you couldn't really take them seriously. Like you knew that they were a threat because they had guns and shit and they were always wanting to come kill you. You know, and they were wanting to go and hump your face and hump your skull and your dead fucking corpse because, I don't know, they're, they're sick fucks. But the thing is, now, they look so fucking scary. Like, they look like some shit out of a horror movie or some survival horror game or some shit like that. Like, the pig cops and everything, you know, they don't look like the pig cops that we were used to wearing their little fucking police uniform coming at you. I got a shotgun and shit. You're gonna get it. Whee! And they're shooting you and everything. That was that was my lame squeal, by the way. My lame pig squeal. Didn't work out very well. Whee! That sounds fucking retarded. Anyway, so moving forward... The pig cops in this, yeah, they're all, like, big and buff. They have super big fucking muscles, and they're, like, running at you, ready to, like, rip your fucking head off and just start fucking your, like, your spine and, like, all types of other shit. I started thinking about, like, random things that they were going to stick their dick in. Like, they were going to probably make an orifice and then do it, but, yeah. I don't know. They're a hell of a lot scarier now. I'm, like, the octobrains, you know. They're, like, chucking shit at you now, and if you toss a pipe bomb at them, they just catch it and toss it right back at you. It's, like... You can't fucking do that. And they're like, oh no, we can. Check it out. Look at these tentacles. It's like hentai tentacle rape. <laughs> but yeah, it's a hell of a lot scarier seeing them, you know, run around like that now. All around, I really like the designs just because they went out of their way to make them realistic. And not just realistic, but actually look really menacing. So if they're coming at you, you're just like, oh shit. And well, it's not even just the fact that they look menacing, but they gave them additional moves so that, you know, it isn't the old tired bullshit of, well, I've got a weapon, I'm going to shoot you. So, yeah, you actually have to have, like, some kind of strategy when going into certain areas. Because if you're in, like, a tight corridor and there's a whole bunch of them, and if there's ones up on a catwalk or ones down below or ones, like, down in the water coming after you and shit like that, like, you actually have to think about a lot of this stuff just because they have all these very different attacks. So yeah, that's actually pretty badass what they did with all the new aliens. Graphically, I think the game looks just fine. That's actually going to be one of the things many people are going to be like, Oh, fuck you, how could you say that? It looks so ugly. But realistically, it doesn't. Okay, I played the PS3 version. I got to see Duke Nukem Forever running on a high-end PC with everything maxed out. And I've also seen the 360 version. Yes, granted, the PC version looked a lot nicer and actually ran a lot nicer because it wasn't there was like no slowdown whatsoever. But here's the thing. Whenever you compare the game to like all the other first person shooters, no, it doesn't look as nice as those, but it doesn't look bad. It's pretty much one of those things of, well, it doesn't look like nicer than everything else on the market, so we're going to go and dismiss its graphics. And that's essentially what's happening a lot of times whenever an editor is coming across a game. They're going out of their way to be able to go and say, oh, this looks like shit, and that looks like shit, and this is blah, blah, blah. And honestly, it, it's just, it's fucking retarded because it looks just fine. Anybody that's saying otherwise, you're just looking for complaints and you're wanting to complain because the game really doesn't look that bad. You know, does it look like, you know, all the fucking first-person shooters that are going to be coming out? Like, does it look like Modern Warfare 3 or Body Count or some shit like that that are going to be coming out? No, it doesn't look as good as those. But the thing is, on my TV, my HDTV, my big-ass TV, yeah, it looked just fucking fine. The music in Duke Nukem Forever was pretty much exactly what I thought it was going to be. There was a bunch of moments where there was just guitar shredding and it sounded very fucking metal. Now it's something, naturally, me being a metalhead, absolutely fucking loved, you know. 
And the thing is, like, if you like rock music, you'd like metal, you like anything that's even somewhat similar, then yeah, you'll be able to appreciate those music segments. They also have the very serious, like, this is real epic music, you know, that you would see in, like, some kind of action movie. And those parts, it's not too bad, but there was a couple songs, whenever they came on, I just thought they were kind of lame. I don't know. Mind you, I would rather just hear all the guitar parts constantly, all throughout, except for in the story segments, where I'd want it to be just quiet or some shit. But regardless, yeah, I actually dug the music quite a bit. Back in the day, Duke Nukem, you know, he had all of his one-liners, and most of which were taken from a lot of movies. Um, most notably, one of my favorites happens to be Evil Dead and Army of Darkness, because he quotes a lot of things that Ash, the main character from that, had said. And that's absolutely fine by me, because honestly, that's a fucking awesome movie to quote. But the thing is, in this one, there's a lot more leniency now compared to back then. Duke can say all types of random shit and get away with it. He can say fuck, shit, piss, cunt, dick, cock, whatever the fuck he wants to say, he can say. And yes, I'm very foul mouth. I already know that. I'm talking about Duke Nukem, so if anybody is like, you say the word fuck too much. Fuck you. Anyway. So, going on to Duke Nukem and all of his little one-liners, John St. John does an awesome job, once again, being able to just spread out all the random things that Duke will say that we're going to enjoy, quote, and end up making another Ventrilo harassment video out of, because, quite frankly, well, we needed more stuff to say, because we were running out after a while. Now, the replay value of the game is somewhere Duke Nukem Forever actually excels greatly, because beyond the one-player campaign mode and story mode and whatnot that you can go through, after you beat the game, well, you actually unlock a whole bunch of stuff that's going to allow you to be able to obtain a whole bunch more. First off, you actually get a cheats menu, which most people, you know, they may not want to go through with cheats, but if you already beat the game, fuck it, they're there. So you can go and you can toggle all the little cheats that you want on and off, and there's a lot of them that just so happen to make the game really entertaining. Or if you know somebody that wants to play the game but doesn't really actually want a challenge, they just want to be able to enjoy Duke Nukem for what it is, fun, then go ahead, put on like, you know, infinite ammo, infinite health, whatever the fuck it is that you actually want to put on, throw it on, let them enjoy the game, or if you just want to have goofy shit on so they can see the game in a completely different way, then yeah, you have that option. Now, the multiplayer in the game happens to be something I always liked. Now, Duke Nukem 3D, if you ever played on Xbox Live Arcade, or if you owned a PC version that has like all the Duke Nukem expansions and everything, then essentially you already know what to expect. You basically just run around, shoot the shit out of each other. Now, you know, they have extra modes and everything, like Capture a Babe, which is Capture the Flag, essentially, but you're running around with a chick hoist over your shoulder, and you can smack her ass whenever she starts freaking out. You know, it, it's all in good fun. Another cool thing about running around in the multiplayer mode is that you'll accumulate points over time from all the experience that you gain from, you know, getting kills and stuff like that. But the thing is, you can actually use this customized Duke Nukem, so you can give him, like, goofy fucking hats and glasses and all types of random stuff, and just make him look different, which is something that I immediately did. I went and I got to like level 20 within the first day that I was playing it and had to go and customize Duke because I don't have the same Duke Nukem that everybody else does. I kind of wish that they would have had more options for this, but I'm not going to complain because at least they had something to be able to differentiate everybody. I don't know. I just kind of wish that they would have had like a pixel version of Duke. That would have been really fucking funny. One notable thing about multiplayer is that there's actually two items that you can get in it that happen to be exclusive only to multiplayer. So you'll never find them when running around in the one player mode. And that's a multiplier for damage. So you get a damage multiplier, which will make you do fuck tons of damage. So if you thought the shotgun was really bad whenever you're running around regularly, yeah. You pretty much just have like a hand cannon of rape. It's just like. <laughs> Say goodbye to the enemy in front of you. So yeah, they'll be really sad face <laughs> whenever they're running around and you're pretty much just owning the shit out of everybody. And God forbid if you have the rocket launcher, that's just... It's basically a nuke. Duke Nukem. Ha! I get it now. Anyway, and beyond that, you actually get a bottle of whiskey, which is... It, it's Jack Daniels, which also made me pretty happy because seeing Jack Daniels bottles just, you know, floating around in Duke Nukem is pretty awesome. kind of wish that they would have had bottles of Jaeger in it, though. That would have been pretty fucking sweet, and very metal. Now another one of the things that you can unlock is the Duke Nukem Forever timeline, which you can go through and you can see, you know, exactly what did this game go through, like what hoops did it run through, what trial and error, all the other bullshit that it's gone through over, what, 12, 13, 
50 fucking years of development time, which most people are, you know, pretty up to date on the history of it just because it's something that was always in the video game news every so often. So people got to be able to get a taste of it here and there. But the thing is, being able to see everything like put there, you actually kind of grow an appreciation for the game just because it seriously went through hell in a handbasket. And there's been like, I don't know how many versions of Duke Nukem Forever, which, I mean, there are games that most people are really into that go through multiple versions before they actually have the final version comes out, like Resident Evil, for instance. There's Resident Evil games that we've never forgotten our hands on because they changed them so often, like Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 4, for instance, are two games that they changed so many times, and there's actual different versions floating around out there. Well, the thing is, Duke Nukem Forever went through the same thing, except for it was mostly because 3D realms had their heads too far up their fucking asses, and we're already well aware of that, so why rant about it? Round off all the things that you can unlock after you're finished completing Duke Nukem Forever it just so happens to be Duke's Digs. And Duke's Digs happens to be Duke's Mansion. And inside the mansion, it's just basically Duke Nukem's mansion, but the thing is, everywhere that you go, it looks like Duke just moved in and he hasn't unpacked a single fucking thing, because quite frankly, he's too busy pounding the shit out of some badge. Well, whenever you are playing through multiplayer mode, you can unlock a whole bunch of shit and get to decorate the house, essentially. Uh, I kind of wish that you could put everything somewhere, kind of like The Sims in a way, but whatever. That's just something that had jumped in my head. I was like, that'd be pretty cool, but... Anyway, whenever you level up, earn experience and everything in multiplayer mode, you'll get more items within the place. And it's pretty cool seeing some of the stuff because they'll even have like screenshots from Duke Nukem 1 and 2. Um, and the thing that I like about those is those are the Duke Nukem side-scrolling games that most people never even got to play or enjoy whatsoever. And the thing is, you know, that's like back before it was like in 3D in a first-person shooter and Duke Nukem didn't even have his trademark shades. So everybody's just like, holy shit, that looks so fucking different. But yeah, those were Duke Nukem 1 and 2. Just seeing little screenshots from it, like in a big portrait that's like up on the wall. It's a pretty cool feeling. And just all the little funny gags and everything that they have strength throughout. Plus, you actually have really hot chicks that are there to cater to your every need. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> dupes every need. But yeah, interacting with them is probably one of the more amusing things, because anytime that you talk to them, they always have some random funny-ass thing to say, so yeah, I was kind of glad that there was some big titty chicks for me to go and walk up to and be like, uh, Duke Nukem, and they're just like, random thing about your wiener! <laughs> and it's, it's pretty fun, all in all. Plus, it's just something really nice to be able to have as an extra, and it gives you something to do, so fuck it, why not? So, finally, it comes down to, what is my verdict on the game? Well, my final verdict for the game is that it deserves an, a reasonable score. My score for it is going to be an 8.5. Now, many of you might be like, it doesn't deserve a score that high, or some of you might even say it deserves a score higher than that. Well, whatever the case may be, that's it, what I feel that the game deserves. Now, you know, if I was going to be a fan about it, I'd be like, oh, it gets a 10. No, fuck that. It gets an 11 out of 10 because it's that fucking great. But no, I'm actually going to be completely honest. The game deserves an 8.5. It's not perfect by any means, but at the same point, the game is fucking awesome. And it, most importantly, it's one thing that all video games should be always. It's fun. Anytime that you pick up a video game, if it's not fun, if it's not entertaining in any single way, then what the fuck is the point to playing it? Okay, you should be entertained by the gameplay, by the story, by the graphics, by the sound, by whatever the case may be. You know, the, the game is supposed to entertain you, and that's what this game did. It was frantic and paced with all the random enemies that were jumping out and just shooting living shit out of you and ducking behind cover, going picking up other weapons and shooting living crap out of them, tossing pipe bombs, blowing them up, getting rockets, shooting them all over the fucking place, reloading your gun, shooting them in the face, running over, uppercutting them, booting them in the face. It didn't fucking matter. It was dude. Nukem, and I loved it. Every single time that I was doing it, I was just having a blast. I mean, granted, that could be like a nostalgic value, but the thing is, even if I didn't play a Duke Nukem game, if I didn't play any Duke Nukem game prior to this and pick this one up, I'd love it. The thing is, I've grown up with first-person shooters way back on PC playing, you know, Duke Nukem, I was playing Doom, I was playing Quake and Blood and things like that, and then I went on into, like, Nintendo 64, played Perfect Dark and GoldenEye on the PS2, and just, like, the evolution of shooters. So I've been there throughout everything, from online to offline, from split-screen to just one-player campaigns. I played everything, and the thing is, this actually belongs with some of the best that I've played. And I say that wholeheartedly and completely honest to many of you. You know, you can say what you want about the game, but the thing is, ultimately, this game was 
fun. And that's all that it really needed to be. The game was entertaining as shit. And at, for a Duke Nukem fan, it's even more fun and even more entertaining because it's a character that many of us have grown up and really liked. So in closing, Duke Nukem Forever is fucking awesome. All the, all the websites, all the magazines, anybody out there that's going to tell you as a fan, as a gamer, that this game isn't great, you're out of your fucking mind. And anybody that's going to sit here and comment and saying, well, you're just saying that because you're a fan, you're a moron, okay? Because I don't have any stake in this game. Yes, I'm a fan of something, but when it fucks up, it fucks up. Okay, there's tons of games and franchises and developers and consoles and everything that have their downsides to it. I'll be the first person to go and admit all their problems because I have no problem with doing that. Okay, I want a product to be the best possible thing. But whenever people are taking a shit on something just for the sake of taking a shit on it, that's when I have a problem with it because all you're doing is you're basically being a dickhead. If you're looking for something like Modern Warfare 3 or some random shit and that's Call of Duty in any way, no, this is not Call of Duty whatsoever. This isn't trying to be Call of Duty. This is actually a breath of fresh air and is needed in a first-person shooter genre because every fucking shooter that's coming out is basically a clone of Call of Duty. And that's what everybody wants to be is Call of Duty because Call of Duty sells 30 million copies within five fucking minutes. Okay, Duke Nukem came along and was Duke Nukem. Okay, and it sprinkled in modern touches throughout the game to be able to make sure that it wasn't outdated. And essentially, that's what Duke Nukem Forever is. It's a nostalgic game that's able to be able to say, well, I am up to speed, but I'm not going to go and like alienate all of the older fans. So that's the, that's the game that you have in general for Duke Nukem Forever. It's an awesome game, and it's able to cater to audiences old and new. And that's something that really any developer should be proud of doing, that they were able to make a lot of people happy. So Duke Nukem Forever, yep, it's fucking awesome. I may have waited forever like many fans out there, and you want to know what? I can say one thing. It was worth the wait, and always. Hail to the king, baby. Thank <laughs> you.